I thought I actually had a little bit more time because I'm looking at my clocks in my house. It's like, oh, 6.30. But then I pull up on my phone, 7.30. I was under the impression that this whole daylight savings mumbo jumbo was over. But I don't know, is this like the last one? Are we, are we done now? Whatever. And, and that concerns me, you know, because that actually does affect the pump. Because what if I think I have two hours to work out? And I'm like, all right, okay, I'll wait a minute and then drive over. And then I get there, 45 minutes so close, that could fuck you up, man. 45 minutes, it depends on your lift. I can get a solid chest day done in 45 minutes. And a solid back day. Okay, I could probably get arms done in 45 minutes, too. I'm not making the best argument, but... Ugh. In no way do I think 45 minutes is enough for legs. Uh, I think legs, specifically hamstrings and quads, that's going to require a little bit more freaking energy. Just a little bit more effort in those sets. And what does that mean? It means that I'm going to have to fucking you know, take a little bit longer to catch my breath. When it comes to... Eh, I guess I could kind of superset it. Do like a set of hamstring curls and then jump onto like a machine leg press or, you know, Smith squats or squats or leg extensions, whatever. Go back and forth that way. But I haven't really been a huge fan of that superset style of workout for a while. And I don't say that without having tried it. I went, I've gone through a very large amount of different training splits in my day, right? I've done, uh, for a while I was doing a two a day kind of workout split where I'd lift twice. Um, like I would do back in the morning and then chest in the evening. And then I would do, uh, I would do legs in the morning and then arms in the evening because I had somehow gotten under the impression that um, after 48 hours, a muscle is ready to be trained again. So I really wanted to optimize that recovery period and say, okay, if after 48 hours, I'm ready to hit the muscle again, muscle protein synthesis has occurred, then why wait? So I was doing like a two a day kind of style, or a two day. I called it limb day and torso day. Back and chest being torso and arms and legs being legs. Uh, but what I have then what I have then come to realize that's just too fucking much. You know, multiple weight training sessions in a day probably unnecessary. And even if they didn't hinder growth and recovery, like uh, I'm about to hit back in a little bit of rear delts. If I were to do rear delts earlier in the day on their own. And then do back, you know, at night. It's the same workload. I'm just spreading it out over a longer period. You know, so if you were to do chest and back on one day, if you did back in the morning and then chest in the evening, is that more like traumatic to your system than doing chest and back at the same time? You know, I'm not really sure. I don't really think so. Because you're doing the same workload in one day. But... It's just not very fucking feasible. You know, I was in the gym way too long. <laughs> I think one a day is, uh, one weight session a day and one cardio session a day. That's the limit, I think. <laughs> oh, my goodness. At least for me. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, and then I had kind of moved back to, like, uh, Arnold split for a while. I was doing legs, chest and back, and then arms. And... For every body part, or for every lift, I was supersetting. So legs, hamstrings, and quads, and this was for months on end, by the way, was a set of hamstring curls, and then jump to a leg extension, and do a set of leg extensions. Hamstring curls, leg extensions. You know, just back and forth. RDLs, Smith Machine squats. This was, uh, I was doing this last summer, or two summers ago. Yeah, two summers ago, I was working out at a Planet Fitness because I would go there every day after work. So I didn't have barbell squats in the routine for a while. But that was the routine. Hamstring curls, or hamstrings, 
quiet. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Which I liked. And I did the same thing with chest and back. So I would, you know, I'd get totally warmed up on both sides. Then do a set of pull downs, run over to the Smith, incline bench. Set of pull downs, pec flies. You know, that sort of back and forth style. And if you have a day where you're lifting like that, and you are hitting two muscle groups at once, most commonly probably is going to be legs and arms. It is going to be a little bit more efficient. Like I'll be able to finish my workout of arms quicker if I do a set of push downs and immediately jump to a set of curls and then rest in between those two like back and forths. All right, set of push downs of failure, immediately run over to curls and then rest. You know, there's a little bit of like, you know, 20, 30 seconds walking over to the dumbbells. So I'm not totally gassed before I do that set. But I, you know, I haven't really been doing that back and forth style. Just because, I don't know. Well, I do know, I'll explain. I like the idea of hitting one muscle group with complete attention and focus before moving on to the next. So if I'm doing arms... I like just completely obliterating triceps and then saying, okay, triceps are now destroyed. Let's move on to curls and then continuing the workout like that. But complete opposite side, I also like doing tricep pushdowns and immediately superset it with curls back and forth, back and forth for the whole workout because it is a little more efficient. And when I finish the lift, my whole arm is pumped at once. So my triceps are fully pumped. And my biceps are just as full of blood. So when I pose down, it does look extra cool. You know, do not neglect the, uh, or do not fail to forget. I don't know why I'm trying to say such fucking fits. When your arms are fully pumped, triceps and biceps at once, your arms look fucking huge. And if triceps were pumped 30 minutes ago, and now your biceps are fully pumped, there is a tangible difference in the way it's going to look. So, something to keep in mind. It appears to be fucking totally packed. I hope that they don't give me any trouble. Sometimes, uh, you're kind of asking for it if you bring a tripod into Planet Fitness. So, I won't take offense. There isn't any time like three minutes away. So, if I get booted, no biggie. But, Let's find out. All right. So, I usually would want to start off back with the bananas amount of weight and just pretty much throw it around as quick as possible. But after doing a set of hamstrings on the last leg day, where I kind of held the weight in the stretch position for a moment, so, well, I mean, I guess you'll see it, but just a different kind of set. No matter what rep scheme you do, if you take it to failure, it's still a set to failure. So I think maybe one or two like that. Let's see where to go next. One more, same way. Let's move on. Not sure what to. Single arm rows ought to be perfect for a nice movement. Whew. 
One quick little anecdote for this machine. If you're at a point where you're running out of fucking weight and the stack is too much for you, or no, 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 the stack isn't enough for you, if you hold way up top and you grab the handle way up here, you get more leverage and the weight's gonna feel lighter. So if you're one of our, let's just say stack limited lifters, do whatever you can to make the lift more difficult. So, I'm putting my hands way down here at the bottom. I, uh, I'm not exerting so much of a moment arm, if you know what I'm talking about. Basic gist. With a machine like this, the lower you pull from, the heavier. But, one more. I think I might do a back and forth. Two sets of a row base movement and then two sets of a pull down. So let's move on to something a little more pull down-ish. Uh, <laughs> it happens, <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. S same movement, but a uh, different style. So instead of straight up pull downs like I was doing in the beginning, I'm gonna go a bit wider and consequently, like don't, I I'll, I'll mean, I'll, I'll explain. But whenever I go really wide, I can't pull the bar that deep. Like that, there's no chance I get this bar to even come close to touching my chest. I mean, I could get like chin level, whatever. But regardless of how the range of motion looks, this is something you're gonna have to consider on your own. It's just how something feels, you know? If I do a weird kind of tricep push down and it absolutely destroys my triceps, or if I find some movement that looks fucking funky as all hell, but I can feel it in the targeted muscle like crazy. And guess what? No matter what people say, it's a good movement. So don't get too, uh, don't get too self-conscious if what you're doing is giving you a crazy burn. So that would be perfect. Okay. Ah, one more just like that. Done with these. Time for two sets of rows. 
All right, I think a nasty set of V-bar or whatever this handle is called, rows, should be perfect. All I have to do is couple it with a good song. Okay. Uh, let's make that a drop set. This handle sucks. I gotta switch it out for the next one. Okay. Yeah. Let's switch to a straight bar. I think same style, just a different handle. Okay. Holy fuck. All right. I think just two more sets of a little something something, and we're done. One thing, which, I mean, literally we just watched it fucking happen. The close grip handles down here. I feel a bit more, well, still a little mid-back, but more lats. Because when you hold a handle like that, your elbows are down here at your sides. It's like the bottom of a pullover. It's a lot of lats. But with the straight bar, especially when I flare my elbows up and I'm up here, instead of down here, I'm getting a lot more traps and all that other fanciness between my mid-back and my rear delts. Terry's major, whatever, fucking cool shit. So let's set up a little cable contraption and finish this back day off. Kind of a incline bench, a few feet away from the cable. Cable pretty high up. I'll just explain it after. I kind of want to just get this set down. Oh, okay. Okay, fuck. Yeah, let's get out. Let's find somewhere to pose down. Okay, my. There we go. All right, so there's nobody in here changing, but I still want to get this pose down done quick. Uh, Cause I get I, I got some side delts to do. There's only 20 minutes left, so let's do it through the shirt. Lat spread first. Just judge the overall thickness and width. No. Oh. Okay, that feels pretty fucking good. Let's get this thing off. Let's peel this thing off and look look at what's underneath. Boy. All my other pants were dirty. So cargo's with the belt it is. But we'll just run through some classics and then get back out there. Me tell me. That's certainly a last spread. Okay. All right. Let's go get rear delts going. All right. So I'm a bit spoiled. My shoulders are pretty developed compared to everything else. So they don't demand the most insane attention. But 
I'm a fucking lifter at heart. Even if they don't need work, they still want a fucking rear delt pump. So I'll just do a few sets here. Maybe a few sets of something by the cables. Nothing crazy. Honestly, it's not like I'm absolutely destroying the fibers. I really am just kind of getting the shoulder pump. Or rear delt at least. <clears throat> Okay. Whenever I really start to feel my traps take over, that's kind of my cue to chill. But a few more here. You know what? Fuck it. I'm full shoulder day. Let's go do some side laterals. Not like a crazy shoulder day, of course. That was just four sets of rear delts. But they're pumped. And they are a strong point. But let's get some side down, side down, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. <laughs> Not the most efficient style of set. But I do like single arm lateral raises. Sort of bent over and inclined bench. It's just more constant tension. Because so you got to think, when you do a normal lateral raise, you're sitting here and you're holding the weight directly underneath your shoulders. So you have no tension on your side delts, you know? Like, you can hold the weight. Your grip's going to give out before your shoulders do. But when you lean up against an incline bench, it's twisting my body in this angle. So now, even though I'm at the bottom of the rep, I still have tension on my side delts. So I feel like I just burn out quicker. But if you hear... I might just do three or four and be done. 30s will be my weight of choice. And similarly with rear delts, once I start to feel my traps doing some work, I kind of just stop. <sighs> Roll my sleeves, see how the shoulders look, and skedaddle. All right, let's see. We in focus? Perfect. I would love a tank top right now, but I'm not crazy enough to take my shirt off in a Planet Fitness, you know, dumbbell area. So, I think sleeves rolled up will simply have to do. But I think it gets the point across quite well. 
get the oh there we go perfect so i mean you tell me is that a fucking pair of shoulders or what you can't even see the whole fucking thing because my, my sleeves are coming up some of it but this right here this shadow on the back side over my tricep look that is what i'm talking about when it comes to having really developed rear delts when they're big enough your shoulder has this roundness not just from the front of the side but also from the fucking back like uh, i mean let's just be honest a fully capped shoulder is what lame or badass and fucking cool pretty obvious so a little yeah let's just skedaddle all right so 25 minutes have passed because the car was so freaking cold i wanted to sit here for a minute and let it heat up but plan now is to make a beeline directly towards canes i'm freaking hungry for it and uh i've been good i haven't even had canes for weeks so well actually is that even true maybe two weeks my withdrawal symptoms of uh I'm not a Canes addict. I'm just, I'm a Canes enjoyer. I can quit whenever I want. I just, I just enjoy it. But that'll be good. That'll be freaking good. I think my parents want to watch a movie too. So I might just sit in with them on whatever the heck they're watching. But really good back day. And, you know, I'm beginning to think that I th may benefit from chilling on back uh just because in comparison with everything else on my build my back's pretty good i'd say when it comes to my strong points uh it probably goes shoulders number one and back number two everything else is kind of balanced and then my weakest point triceps so i, th I mean you gotta remember uh if you know anything about the way of the giant pumpkin this is a, this is a, uh, I don't know if Devin Larratt developed this theory of, I feel like it's been done before, but the premise is if you're trying to grow a giant pumpkin, then, you know, you start off with whatever vine and you see which one becomes the biggest and you pick the one that has the most promise and you cut all the other fucking pumpkins off. So all of the nutrients from this pumpkin vine are just being sent to this one fucking pumpkin so that it's got more energy at its disposal to grow and get big you know so following that logic um well the logic there which explained by devin larrett arm wrestler extraordinaire is you know he's got his money arm which in arm wrestling means that's the arm he's really competing with that he's got you know, the most skill and just genetic whatever it's just his stronger arm his dominant arm so arm wrestlers what they'll do is they've got their money arm and their other arm and they're the one that they put all their focus into and most of their training into is substantially larger than the other one you know? so just by looking at that that's legitimate just tangible proof that by backing off well okay maybe not exactly well, of course whatever you train is going to develop more than something that you don't train but you could sort of, I mean, I feel like you can understand the fact that if you're not training your left arm, then you're going to have more energy to recover the right one. Now, I would never go so far as to train one side of my body and not the other one. That's just not the point of, uh, you know, hypertrophy. You know, I need that, uh, need that symmetrical look. But for me, you know, if I look at everything, since back and shoulders are kind of a strong point for me, it would make sense that if I eased up on the intensity or even just the frequency of their training, then the energy that I'm, you know, energy and nutrients that are getting sent to my back and my shoulders whenever I train them could be better used on my chest and my arms and my legs. So I've gone through periods of time where I skipped back. Um, I've gone, I'm not sure how long, maybe six months I've gone through periods of time where I did not train back, at least four months, uh, because it was a strong point. I wanted the rest of my build to catch up. So 
I think I'm at the point now where I've seen, or I see enough of my, like, poses and stuff where I can tell. Back. I know this is insane coming out of my mouth, but I think it's big enough relative to the rest of me, you know? So I think I'm going to be better off putting more of my recoverability points, if you will, into my arms and my chest and my legs. So I think I'm going to start chilling out on back. This may, uh, <clears throat> my car is making a really fucking weird noise. It's probably just my a belt or something. But, uh, yeah, so I think I should chill out on back. So that's going to make my training split a little bit... Um, hmm, I'll have to think about it. Because, yeah, I do think I need I should probably relax on back a little bit. Big enough. To the point where I may only need to hit it once every two weeks or something. So if I take back out of the equation of my, my split, you know, I've got legs chest, back, and then arms, if this back day disappears, now I've got a blank day. And hell, maybe that would just be better off as a rest day to recover. So, <laughs> oh, oh my god. So I'll see. But yeah, I think I'm going to relax on my back training, similarly to how I've been doing it with my shoulder training. Or, eh, well... I don't know. I mean, I don't want to skip back entirely because I don't want to lose my, like, my back's strength or anything. But maybe, fuck. I mean, I'd feel kind of silly coming in and just doing, like, two working sets. But if all I'm trying to do is maintain my back's size and strength, you've got to remember muscle maintenance is much easier and requires much less volume than muscle growth does, you know? So... I'm going to have to think about this. I maybe, uh, when it comes to working out your split like this, like if you have a few extra strong body parts that you want to kind of maybe back off the intensity of your training on, it does help to kind of write out your split on paper and like really look at it instead of just trying to think it over in your mind. Because, uh, I mean, I think we all understand that. It's easier to think your thoughts out and really kind of analyze them if you write it down. But yeah, I think back's got to chill. Back has got to freaking chill. Uh, and then especially because I was doing, um, when I see the pose down, I'm pretty sure we were pumpless or I was pumpless at least. I may have to look at more of those pictures when I was training with, uh, with Nick justice and Jacob Robichow. I may be saying that wrong, but you know, he's a fucking professional. Jacob is, he's a pro bodybuilder. Uh, and when it comes to most of our shots, he's ahead on the arm game primarily in chest. I'd say those are the two things where he really jumps out above me. Uh, but when we do a back lat spread, size-wise, not too incomparable. Of course, he's dieting down and I'm bulking up. So that does make it a little bit tricky to compare people's builds. But yeah, I think back is because my back training is going to become a bit more sparse. So uh, I don't know, man. Maybe instead of a, instead of a dedicated arm day... I might split up arms into two days because I don't, for me, my limiting factor in terms of my training frequency is pretty much legs, right? I used to do legs, chest and back, and then arms and then repeat, but I can tell my leg training is better when I have three days in between hitting legs instead of two. So I don't want to like completely suck a day out of the loop and then train legs every three days. It's just not, um, for me personally, it just doesn't end up working out. I'm not fully recovered by the time I get back and I can tell it's kind of hindering my lift. So maybe I'll just do a fucking bicep day and a, and a tricep day on their own. Because I do want my arms to catch up too. They're, uh, I'd say arms are definitely something which I do want to build up. So maybe giving them each an individual day, yeah, that's probably good for me. So do not be surprised if the split for the next few months, or, well, a few weeks at least, I gotta try it out, ends up being just fucking legs. Oh, actually, you know what? Mm. I, I want to even it out. I want the workouts to be very balanced. 
in terms of their volume. But yeah, I think for the next few weeks, I'm going to take back out, maybe just do a little bit for like maintenance, maintenance purposes, like just do like two sets of pull downs every so often and two sets of like rows every so often. Uh, but yeah, I think if I do end up sticking with that sort of idea, then that's going to mean that the only muscle groups I'm going to be hitting in my split are going to be hamstrings and quads, chest, biceps, and triceps. So five... I could consolidate maybe I might end up doing the biceps with hamstrings just based on this little combination because then I can have a whole day for quads which quads is a very taxing lift for me so if I can cut hamstrings out and then just have a day dedicated to quads I think it'll be better because I won't be you know literally pre-exhausted from training hamstrings before and then a whole day dedicated to triceps I want my triceps to come up. So, fuck. I think the lift from here on out, for at least a few weeks, well, at least a week, you know, I've made changes to my workout split before, and then I went back to what I like. Uh, but I think it's going to look something like this. Uh, let me let me try to fucking imagine this here. Probably, I want to separate chest and triceps by a day. Because they're both going to get kind of activated. So I don't want them to be playing into each other. Yeah. I think something like this. Quads. Chest. Biceps and hamstrings. Triceps. I think that's what I got to do for a little bit. And not because I think that's an awesome split. And that's what everybody should be doing. Do not even think about taking like that. I mean, you just, that my whole thought process just developed in the car. So that was my whole, you know, sometimes when shit gets clipped, it kind of takes out the explanation. But yeah, I think those are the weak points that I want to bring up. So taking the gas off of my strong points would just make sense. So I know that all the, because you got to remember, people watch these videos. Not everyone is watching every single one. In its entirety, which I can understand. There's a fucking million of them. Uh, so I'm not going to be surprised when all the comments are like, why is he only doing triceps today? Why is he only doing, like, where's back? Where's the back training? So if, uh, if you would like, if you'd like to be a good Samaritan, if you ever see comments like that, maybe just say he's working on his weak points, you know, something like that. But yeah, I, I don't know why I haven't been thinking this sooner. Because I do, like, relative to my back, my chest needs work. And relative to everything else, my arms also need work. And then everybody needs bigger legs. I think that's going to be the split. So that'll be good, you know? That'll be, uh... But it's not like I watched a video of some other bodybuilder do this exact, like, move. And I'm like, okay, he did it, so it's going to work for me. I mean, you just heard me fucking explain it. Did it make some logical sense? I think it fucking did, you know? Half the shit, sure, you could copy what other people do, and, like, it might work. But at the origin of all this, like, conventional moves, bodybuilding-wise, in terms of, like, frequency... <coughs> frequency and sets and, like, rep schemes and styles and movements and stuff... It was all just originated by think by people using their brain, right, putting a little effort in the, with their noggin and thinking, okay, this makes sense, <clears throat> and then translating a theory, like just a thought in their head, to trying it out for a few months. If it works, it works. Sick. If it doesn't work, ah, eh, screw it. Go back to what works. So, <coughs> if I could leave. If I could somehow imprint uh, one idea into every lifter's mind, it would be to put a large emphasis on trial and error in terms of like their training, their diet, their everything. Like there's so many, there's a million fucking buzzwords when it comes to working out. Like too many to even keep track of, you know? And everybody has different opinions and different ideas. So. What's going to make you like one guy's ideas versus the other? 
half of it is just going to be the likability of the dude. You know, like if you like somebody and maybe you like the way they look, you're probably going to be more inclined to listen to what they have to say. And sometimes that might be the wrong fucking move, you know, because it may not fucking translate to your own gains. So that's why I really want to stress the importance of trying this shit out for yourself and then seeing what happens. You know, you're never going to train so wrong that you're going to fucking croak. Right. And if you've been kind of plateaued and your gains have been pretty static, you know, you can tell looking at you now versus a year ago, there's not much difference. And, you know, even in like size, strength, or just your current body weight, the amount of muscle you have in your frame. If you're not that much different and you've been doing the same routine for fucking, you know, 12 months on end. What do you have to lose, man? Because clearly what you've been doing is only enough to maintain where you're at. So, I mean, we all know the definition of insanity. If you're repeating the same shit and expecting it to suddenly just start working for you. You're, uh, I tell you what, you're not going to get anywhere fast, for sure. And the last thing we want to do is just toil away. You know, like if I had zero gains over the last year, something is fucking wrong with me. And I got to find out what that is as soon as possible so I can, you know, move the scale, up the ticker, you know, make some, make some fucking muscle, you know? So, don't be afraid to uh, try things which may be considered conventionally unconventional because you think it might end up working for you. And then there's only two results that can happen. And both of them are positive. Either you, you know, gain gains, right? It ended up being a successful experiment. You made some fucking, you know, you deposited some mass onto your frame or you learned, okay, this did not work. Let me try something else, right? We, it's uh, and that's a great way to look at shit. You either succeed or you learn. Are any of those situations negative? No, come on, man. And uh, I know it's a little bit tricky to do that because if you've done a workout split for like a year, or you've been working out in the same way for like a year on end, and you made gains in the beginning, then you literally have proof in your mind like, oh, this worked a few months ago. Why isn't it working now? You know, like I've been reluctant to change my workout style uh, as years have gone on. But look, man, I do not regret it because I know that the more changes I make over time and I try to improve my training in terms of like it's stimulation or it's trajectory or whatever the amount of volume and frequency for the most part every change that i've made and i've made some which were stupid and i learned that like when i was doing the two-a-day stuff like that was fucking dumb but every time i either made more gains and i continue to progress in a way which i think is you know increasing in its efficacy if we want to get off fancy pants you know, smart word kind of termsy but right, either it, it, my training got better or I learned how not to do it and then moved on, you know? So can't stress it enough. Do not get too locked into any idea when it comes to your training. But on the opposite side of that coin, you can't just fucking try all sorts of shit every week because that's just not long enough to really see if it works, you know? Like... That's like laying out in the sun because you want to tan. And then the first day you lay out, nothing happens. And you're like, well, this didn't freaking work at all. Oh, oh, this doesn't work. I can't get tan. Like, that's kind of a weird example. But, like, one workout doesn't do much. You know, going to the gym one time, you will never notice a difference the next day. And I'm not talking, like, of course, you could feel sore. You could feel tired. But I'm talking about, like, your size. You're not just going to grow after one workout. This takes a while. So, you know, pick a certain style or have your buddy show you a workout or whatever. Or even if you've just been training for a while and you feel pretty experienced. But you can tell your training has been very like, kind of lackadaisical. You just sort of go in and do whatever you want and then move on. You know, you do need to do kind of a specific routine for, I don't know, two, three months and then you can kind of gauge, okay, I'm making gains, or 
all right, I'm not making any fucking gains. I need to change something in this routine. And as much information and like debates that happen about training style as there are, it makes people think like, okay, I have to change, I have to change my training. My training is clearly the issue. I have to change, I have to completely uproot my training style and start training like this guy. Oh wait, this guy's wrong, I better start training like this. It's not always about the training either. You gotta remember, there's pretty much three pillars which should be in equilibrium to accommodate gains. And of course, number one is training. You're not gonna fucking grow muscle without stimulating it. Number two is your diet. You're not gonna be able to fucking grow muscle if you don't have enough fucking energy and, uh, I mean, just physical matter and proteins or whatever else in your system to be able to build that muscle. It doesn't just come out of thin air. And then your sleep. So if both of these two things are on point, you're training pretty hard and smart, and you're eating enough food, but your sleep is total shit, and you're only getting like three or four hours a night, I wouldn't expect some serious progress, because you're just going to be fucking hindered, man. You're going to feel like shit when you train, you're going to be fatigued, you're not going to be recovered, you're just going to be toiling away, you know? So you want each of those things to be in equilibrium, right? I'm talking avatar state, all your chakras are flowing. You train hard as fuck, you're full of food, and you get a good night's rest. Uh, you want to be hydrated too, but let's just count that in the food category. Right? When those three things are in fucking in sync, of course I would never say limitless. There's fucking limits upon gains. We are all aware of that. But I see no reason why if those three things are in sync for real, and like you don't just think that they are, they actually are, then you will continue to make progress in the long term. So don't, uh, don't forget it. But I think that's the end of my little speech. Overall update, going to try a new split. Going to keep training hard. Going to keep eating. I mean, I don't think any of that comes as a surprise. So time to get a nasty amount of canes. Chow down. And then probably fucking pass out. I might take an Epsom bath tonight, too, that, uh, that always makes me feel pretty good. But I wish... You know, if anybody knows any, like, big plastic tub companies that I could buy some shit from... Because when I'm at my school apartment, I have a shower, but I don't have a bath. And I want to take, you know, like, Epsom magnesium sulfate baths, because I do feel better afterwards. Like, especially after hard leg days. I took one last night. I can tell I feel a little bit less tender than I typically would. Plus, it just feels good to take a hot bath. If I had a hot tub, that'd be perfect. If you know of any, like, big-ass plastic tub, or if you, you've tried one and you liked it, that would be a comment which would benefit me greatly. So, if not, just make sure you do your cardio, you lift hard, you eat hard, and you sleep hard. Perfect. So I'll see you tomorrow for, um, I'll do arms tomorrow. I'll do arms tomorrow like normal, but then I'm going to flip the, change the workout split. So I will see you for that.